It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, dig into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my very special guest is the one and only Chris Vallotton, and we're going to be discussing his brand new book, Spiritual Intelligence, The Art of Thinking Like God. Chris, it is truly an honor, sir. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, and thank you, thank you for having me on. The last show was great. Well, uh, it's been a few years, but, uh, you know, I, I always try to think, you know, should I have the author give an introduction? In my circles, you're an author who generally needs no introduction. So we're going to skip that today, and we're going to go right into the story behind the book. Uh, I remember sitting in a pub board meeting. It was either late 2018, early 2019. Uh, Steve, my boss at the time, said, Sean, Chris Valentin preached this message on the mind of Christ. I think somehow Chosen has to figure out a book that can be done around this topic. So, uh, you know, I'm curious, you know, from the time that sermon series was going on, did you already have a book in mind or uh, did this idea begin to develop a bit further down the path after that? I always like to find out how did a message get its start? Actually, you know, the very first uh, time I ever heard the phrase spiritual intelligence was actually in a prophecy that I gave to Heidi Baker. And I gave her this prophecy and I said, hey, I feel like you're going to write a book on intelligence, could it, but you know, if you know Heidi, she's a very, she's actually a very intellectual person, and has a, a, a I think a, a PhD. And I said, I feel like you're going to write a book on intelligence, but it's going to be like spiritual intelligence. So you know, that was probably I don't know, 12 years ago, and um, and her and I have talked about doing something together. And but anyway, that that was the first time I ever heard the phrase spiritual intelligence was actually just a prophecy the Holy Spirit gave me. And then, you know, as time went on, I began to think about that spiritual intelligence, spiritual intelligence. And, and then, you know what happens? It's kind of like when you're reading the Bible, you're prepared, you, you see what you're prepared to see. So I began to look for this, this whole subject of spiritual intelligence. And, and I began to realize, like Paul said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And I, like the 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 idea of being renewed in the spirit, like specifically in the spirit of your mind. And then obviously Paul wrote Romans 12, you know, don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then Paul also wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 4, where Paul talks about the um that we have the mind of Christ. And you know, and I started putting these pieces together and seeing these things fit together all through the Bible. And I'm like, oh, there's IQ. There's EQ, emotional intelligence, by the way. EQs, uh, if you haven't read anything on EQ, Sean, I'm sure you have, but some great books out there on EQ. But no one is talking about SQ, about spiritual quotient, but spiritual intelligence. And I started realizing, like, Christians have this other dimension. Like, when we're born again, we have this other dimension. We actually think tridimensionally, IQ, EQ, and SQ. And I'm like, how come no one's talking about this? And then it, I think this is how it goes for all of us. Once you kind of get that lens, you just see it everywhere in the Bible. I'm like, oh, there it is on Solomon. You know, there it is over there on David. There it is on, you know, and it's like you start seeing it on, you start seeing it in action. And you're like, this is, wow, this is profound. I'm surprised no one's talking about this, you know? Yeah, it's like when you get the new car, then you see that everybody else has that same car everywhere exactly. you go. You just can't avoid it. Yeah. Um, Let's talk next, uh, Chris, uh, a bit more about renewing your mind, renew renewing our mind. How does that help us to begin building new neural pathways to supernatural thinking? Well, let me say, uh, let's just do a quick little uh, crash course on neural pathways. Uh, and, and by the way, I am no expert in this whatsoever. Uh, I, I had an a emotional mental crash 12 years ago, and I that, that set me on this journey to ex if my own healing. Like, how do I get well? And I, I read several books on, you know, obviously anxiety, depression, the things I was going through. And one of those books talked about neural pathways, uh, actually several did, but in particular, and she specifically spoke on um, <clears throat> how you can picture neural pathways like a, a block of cheese that you drop a hot marble through. And, she, and I learned that we actually think on highways called neural pathways. And, and the more you think a thought, and I know this, this almost sounds like a, a wrong statement, but the more you think a thought, the more you think a thought. And every, if you kind of picture it like this, this uh, highway, every time I think a thought, I'm, I'm widening that neural pathway, making it easier for me to think the same thought again, be it positive or negative. 
So when Paul talks about renewing, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What are we actually doing? We're actually building pathways to God thoughts. And, um, and I learned like the Romans 12, don't be conformed, but be transformed. The, the actual subject there is to think like God. Think like God. It, you know, we, we say it different ways, like be Christ-like, have the mind of Christ. But we're basically learning to think like God. We're building neural pathways. For instance, uh, my son is late, half an hour late coming home from school. Instead of thinking in the what if negative, like, oh, my gosh, I wonder if he got an accident. I wonder if he got hit by a car. I build neural pathways to I wonder if the principal took him in the office and gave him the most valuable student of the award month, you know, for the month. And I just begin to purposefully build new neural pathways to the way God thinks, which is blessing, abundance, you know, uh, health healing, wholeness. Um, So Romans 12 teaches us to think like God. But 1 Corinthians 2, you know, Paul opens up the subjects and he quotes an Old Testament prophet who says, I hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, it hasn't entered the heart of man, all that God wants to do for those he loves. And And Paul quotes the Old Testament prophet and he goes, the next verse says, but they've been revealed to us by his spirit. So the Old Testament prophet goes, we have no idea what God's thinking. Paul says, we do. And then he goes on to say, who knows the thoughts of a man except for the spirit of the man that's in him? Uh, great, great answer to a question. Does the devil know my thoughts? Not unless he gave them to you. And then he goes, and no one knows the thoughts of God except for the spirit of God that's in him. And then he says, then we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who's from God, that we might know the thoughts of God. And then he ends that whole passage by saying, oh, quoting the Old Testament prophet, who, who knows what God is thinking? And, he, and Paul answers, we have the mind of Christ. So think about this, Sean. Romans 12 teaches us how to think like God through the renewing of our mind. 1 Corinthians 2 teaches us to think the thoughts of God. In other words, having the mind of Christ means I'm reading God's thoughts about a particular subject. So if someone's mean to me and I go, how does God think about that? That's Romans 12. Like, oh, God said, bless those who persecute you. Love those who hate you. That's how God thinks. But when I tap into the mind of Christ and get the thoughts of God, now I'm thinking, what does God think about Johnny cursing me? Is there something specifically that God thinks about Johnny. And maybe it's um, he had a pastor fail him when he was 10 years old or uh, he, uh, you know, and, and had a bad circumstance. And now he's, he is, uh, he's projecting that over you as a pastor. And you are not just going to think good thoughts about him. You're not just going to bless someone who curses you. You're actually going to go in and do surgery on that man's heart. And you're going to, you're going to, remove the offense by by actually speaking this thing. And that's the difference between I think like God, which is we need, and I actually think God's thoughts. Hmm. Wow. That's pretty profound. That's a great connection. <laughs> I, I think it's like I'm just, I'm, we're all learning, so it's, it's a journey. I, I think people get about a third of the way into the book, and they're like, and then they keep going because they want to figure out how to pull this all together. Um, I, I really, you know, as, as a book guy, I'm always curious to see title cha- or chapter titles. And I, I think the fact that you have a chapter with words like pirate and hacker was just a big win for me. So um, let's, let's jump into that chapter next. How do we deal with spiritual pirates, hackers, and deceivers? What do we need to be watching out for? I, I think, you know, I- interesting. I, I use this analogy in the book, but I think it's, it's, I think it's such a, uh, a powerful and simple analogy. You know, it's interesting that the devil is at work in every area of life. And one of the things, you know, I mean, we start out with someone builds a computer. You know, this is, you know, way back. Let's just say 70s and 80s. And and just about the time the software rolls out, someone creates a virus for it. Like, like there's just always somebody trying to pollute something good. In this case, we're not talking about something God, but something good. And so I, I just wanted to have a chapter on the fact that 
one one of the things that happened to me when I started tapping into this whole prophetic thing, this would be like 40 years ago. And of course, in those days, we didn't associate it with spiritual intelligence exactly. But I wish someone would have said to me, hey, when you get, for instance, the gift of prophecy, which is one dimension of, of spiritual intelligence, and when, when you open up to the spirit world, it's not just the Holy Spirit you'll, that you have access to. And First John 4 says, beloved, so that he's speaking to us, don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they're from God. For many false prophets have went out in the world. And the exhortation there is don't become a false prophet by listening to the wrong spirit. And what I wanted to convey in that, in that chapter, especially for maybe younger believers or people that would read a book that they, they don't have a lot of uh, experience in the spirit realm, is that there are hackers, there are demonic spirits that get in there and twist prophetic ministry, twist spiritual intelligence. And I, and I, and I just wanted people to know that there are people that there, there are people who are creating viruses, so to speak, in the invisible realm that are trying to twist the things of God. And the challenge to me, for example, one of the examples I used in the book that I think is so powerful in the Bible is God sends Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh. And, and you, you know, he says, hey, you know, you're going to do this trick with your staff. You're going to throw down a staff. It's going to become a snake. And so, okay, God initiates that, right? God initiates this is God's idea. They get to Pharaoh. They throw down the staff. It becomes a snake. And Pharaoh looks at the sorcerers and goes, can you do this? And they throw down two staffs. They become two snakes. And, 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 and this is part of that hacker thing. It, what I find is that Christians run from the snakes. It's a metaphor. Like, we don't believe in snakes because sorcerers do snakes. I'm like, wait a second. Who initiated the snake idea? It was God's idea that the sorcerers duplicate it, not, not the sorcerer's idea that Aaron and Moses duplicated. And so I was trying to put some words to Christians tend to run away from everything powerful. The devil only counterfeits things that are powerful. He doesn't counterfeit one dollar bills. There's not enough, there's not enough, you know, ROI on it. There's not enough return on investment. So, you know, the, the devil does stuff that's powerful. In, because he can't stop God, so he duplicates the miracles of God. And thus we have false signs, false wonders, false prophets. And some people would read the Bible to say, in the last days, all the prophets will be false. All the signs will be false. All the wonders will be false. And Jesus is warning about it because the false flows with the real. And we have to have, and, and I talk about in this, in this chapter, the gift of distinguishing of spirits. So we know the source of the snake, so to speak. Is that a God snake or is that a sorcerer snake? And, and I'm, I'm actually using it as a metaphor. Like, is that a God thought? Is that the mind of Christ or is the enemy trying to mess with me and duplicate these things? So I do think that especially, you know, we're in the COVID lockdown season right now. Um, we also have the uh, campaign going, you know, with uh, the, the presidential campaign going. We have the, uh, you know, the uh, 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 racial equality thing, and all happening at the same time. And, and there's, there's a God snake through the whole thing, and there's all these other snakes. And I'm like, the gift of distinguishing of spirits, in my mind right now, is the most needed gift of our time. Because God is on the move. He is, he is in the midst of racial equality. He is full of justice. But there's all this other stuff polluting that entire movement. And I would say that about each and everything we're going through. Yes, yes, discern which are the, the God snakes and which are the devil snakes. Uh, that would exactly. be a good thing to sort out in this season. Uh, so once somebody b begins to get a handle on spiritual intelligence, how does that uh, drive or connect into you know, places where God's given us influence, uh, boundaries of our divine assignment? Like How does that kind of connect to the, the mission that we're on from God, so to speak? Well. I think that God's called us to be the most creative, innovative, and wise people on the planet. Not, it, I, I, I call it jealousy evangelism. It's like everyone has access to this. Like, you know, like, I, 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 like sometimes people can read what I write and say, oh, he's creating an elite group of people. I'm like, 
it would be elite if everyone if if there was a sign that says you you can't come in here you know it, it's a it's a club for only us perfect people but the truth is is that the door of that is jesus and everybody has access to that door so if, you know you're listening to this podcast right now and you're like ah oh, he's just an arrogant jerk and he thinks he's smarter than everybody no i think god's smarter than everybody i think that he's given us complete access to his intelligence and i think all you have to do is ask jesus into your life and and let him flip on if you will tr- transform your mind the way the bible would say born again a new creation so I, I think, you know, we get to carry God, God's ideas into every realm of society, whether you're a mechanic. And I've got some great stories in there about, you know, fixing cars through the word of knowledge um, or whether you're whether you're, you know, a, a, a politician, whether you're a, a mom, a dad, like we are disguised as normal everyday people. We look like everyday people, but inside of us is God. And he's working through us. We are the Trojan horse of God in all of society. So, um, so it's been a lot of fun, actually. And uh, there's, there's so many good stories in that, in the book about things God's just done through different people that I've watched and talked to talk about in, in, in myself. And we went to Google, we got invited to Google and we did a, we did a, um, a, I forget the title of the, uh, the Google uh, thing, but I think, but but my part of it was uh, SQ, and so there was 200 people in the meeting, and then they they closed circuit webcast it to their employees. So I don't know how many people watched it, but we we're you know the the two leaders of Google's AI, you know, automated reasoning, were in the room, and uh, they're both believers, by the way, and we were teaching on you know SQ no. EQ, IQ, AI, but now there's SQ. And I did this little 20 minute TED talk with a, with a panel of people. And man, when the talk was over, there was 200 people in line to talk about like, how do you do that? How can I get that? How, it, can anyone have this gift? And um, it, it was just so much fun. So, you know, we get to bring this spiritual intelligence into our everyday life. It's so much fun. Well, and Chris, I got to have you uh, share your story of kind of laying hands on the hood of the truck and God shows you what you needed to fix. I think that's another great uh, everyday kind of concrete example of how this can work. Yeah. So this is this is my introduction. Again, this is long before we called it spiritual intelligence, you know, but um, Bill Johnson came to our church, our little church in Weirville. He became our pastor. Uh, it was 40. I think our church was 40, 35, 40 people. And uh, his first uh, sermon series was a a series on the gifts of the Spirit. Um, And so uh, because our church was so small, we would have a morning service where he would teach, and then we'd have an evening service. There would maybe be 10, 15 of us there. And we would practice the things we learned about the gifts of the Spirit or whatever it is he was teaching. So it was activation. The evenings were activations. Well, I, uh, I had a... A, um, a company, a fleet company uh, that had about, I think, 22 or 25 trucks. And they would rotate them out every three or four years. So they'd buy like seven at a time. And they bought these Chevy trucks. This is in the 80s. And we were an hour from society. So we lived in the mountains. And they were my largest account. So they get these brand new trucks and these brand new Chevy trucks. And within about, I think, maybe a week, the first one breaks down. It won't start. So they, they you know, tow it in, obviously, they're my biggest account. So I, I'm on it. I'm working on it. And, you know, and I worked on it for about an hour. Couldn't figure out why it wouldn't start. And I said, hey, just tow it to the Chevy dealer. You know, it's an hour down the road. And they said, oh, we got seven or 10 more of these trucks. Like, we can't keep towing them down there every time this happens. Like, we have to, we want you to figure it out. So I worked on that thing three or four days. I actually got a hold of the Chevy dealer. He faxed me the wiring diagram. You know, he was very kind to me you know, walked through some tests with me. Uh, and, and by, by, uh, Saturday, I, I was, I had, I'm like, I have no idea why this truck won't start. They don't want to take it back to the dealer. So I'm kind of, um, uh, what do I do? So Sunday morning, Bill taught on the word of knowledge, like information you get by the Holy spirit. You could get it some other way, but the Holy spirit gives you this information. So 
at night we're doing this activation and you know and bill's doing things like um okay i have this uh does anyone have a problem with their right knee i feel like there's someone in the room with a problem with the right knee and the pain's right here you know and he's kind of doing that word of knowledge like for healing and i'm watching this but all i'm thinking about all weekend long is like i got to fix this truck what's wrong with this truck so we're doing this activation. I, I, I'm not totally connected to the activation. And then I have this thought, I wonder if God knows anything about trucks. Now, I, I know it sounds really stupid now, but at the time, I'm like, my rationale was God made bodies. So he obviously knows about a body, but he didn't build trucks. Does he know anything about electronics? So the next day, obviously Monday, I go to work. I work on the truck for about a couple hours. And I tell the guys, like, push this truck out. And then tonight, when you close the shop, push it back in. I'm going to come back tonight, work on it. So I, uh, I come back in the evening and I, I, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm going to use my word of knowledge gift on this truck. And I, I really was like, I'd never heard anyone talk about this. I'd never heard a testimony about this. So I was like, I wonder how you do this. So oftentimes with word of knowledge, we would like touch each other, like lay hands on people. So I'm like, okay, there's nobody here. So uh, it's nighttime. It's like seven, eight o'clock at night. So I put my hands on the fender and I say, Holy Spirit, why won't this truck start? And like very clearly in my mind, I see a picture of a like a diode with a wire off broken. And I hear the, in my mind this voice that says there's a broken wire under the right front fender off a diode. Now, here's the thing, Sean. The wiring diagram showed no that there was there was no wiring, there was no diode in the right front fender. The 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 tech that I was working with never mentioned a diode in the right front fender, and I'm like, oh, what do I got to lose? So I put the truck up on a rack, I got it up in the air, and it was all you know underneath the, in your fender well. It's all that that black undercoating. I get up there with the flashlight and I look, and there's a broken wire, <laughs> and I'm like. Okay, so I, I I let it down a little bit and I solder the wire to the component, which turns out to be a diode, and it starts right up. And Sean, that was like Christopher Columbus discovering the world was round and not flat for me. Like it it opened a door. It was such I know it's such a silly illustration, but it opened the door to a profound idea that God knows about everything. And when I couldn't fix it, he knew what he knew what to do. And honestly, from that day on, I started incorporating words of knowledge. I, I um, I'm a diagnostician as a, a professional diagnostician. Uh, my my job was to diagnose the automotive, you know, the 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 cars, the trucks, the the computer systems, all the man the the fuel management systems. That was my main job. So. Um, I started using the word of knowledge in diagnosis. And uh, I, don't, I don't think I ever had anything I couldn't fix because I would, I would try IQ and EQ. And then I'm like, all right, now let's flow over to SQ. And, uh, and, and then, of course, that opened the door to lots of other things. Well, if God knows about that, then obviously he knows about politics. He knows about COVID. He knows about everything. Hmm. I, lo I love that story. story. Well, and, and something changes in, in your mind when you realize that not only does God know, but he wants to empower you to actually carry forward the solution. Um, it's like, man, my dad really cares. That, that, that's, that's a fantastic story. I love that. It's, it's so relatable and it's so practical. People aren't just getting words of knowledge about emotional things or healing mm -hmm. things. Uh, it's actually a practical thing that made a difference for your business and your ability to service a customer. I love that. That's fantastic. Um, Chris, in terms of uh, people getting beyond the book, I know you've got uh, an SQ assessment at the end of the book. Yeah, I know you've yeah. got a master class that's going to be coming up in January of 2021. So once people read the book, tell tell us where they can go beyond it to keep moving forward with, with what they uh, the SQ.net. What we're trying to do is we're, we, we have the, I, I hope we get there. In, you know, um, I, I know we'll get there. I hope we get there in our, on our timeline. But the, we've, we felt like the book was an open door to a whole, like uh, a discipleship kind of ministry in this area of thinking in this whole area of leadership and thinking. And so we have a, a short assessment in the in the book. And then we have a longer, more uh, in-depth assessment on our SQ website. 
so that you can go in and, and take this test. And it, it really helps you to understand a, a few things like how is God talking to you? Because God has so many languages, but his first language isn't English or Spanish or German. So it's kind of, it's kind of like, okay, is God speaking to you? The answer to that is going to be yes. How is God speaking to me? And, and the idea of the assessment is to kind of open your eyes to see, oh, God's been actually speaking to me like that. I didn't even know that was the language of God. I didn't even know to pay attention to that. And it's really to help build spiritual intelligence, not just identify it. And, and also, God speaks so many different ways to individual people. So he may speak one way to you, Sean, regularly, and speak to me a completely different way. So, so uh, um, the, the assessments, the, the different assessment tools that we created are to open the eyes of the, of the participant to exactly how is God speaking to you? And how do, what do I do about that? Like, how, how do I use this information to create forward progress? And, you know, in the case of the, the, the car is pretty simple, like fix the car. Um, so, and then we want to have where we're heading is SQ coaching. We, we want to create a, you know, kind of there's, there's this whole life coach thing going on, a whole movement around globally, really. But in America, people are becoming life coaches. And we would, we're, we're in the right now in the middle, in the midst of training SQ coaches to actually teach people how to do SQ coaching. Uh, and it's a, a lot around, you know, Solomon. People came from all over the world to hear the the uh, the wisdom of Solomon. And something greater than Solomon is here. And that's the wisdom of Jesus Christ. And we all have access to that. And so I think it's uh, I, I think it's really going to be a lot of fun. Um, we, we've never done anything like this with a book before, you know. Uh, we, we've had some master classes and, and things like that, but nothing like this. So we have a master class. We started a, a website for SQ. We uh, obviously have the book. We have the, the assessment in the book. Then we have a larger assessment on the website. And then our goal b- before 2022, uh, tw- 2021 is over, is that we would you could actually have an SQ coach that would both help you with their SQ in- info and also teach you how to get it for yourself. And, and I'm super excited about that. And uh, we have a gal named Lindsay that's doing this whole thing on spiritual intelligence. She's she's absolutely brilliant at uh, releasing people in the in in the in that area. And so that that's where we're heading. Hopefully, we get there uh, inside of our timeline on the SQ coaching side. Well, and I love that you have these resources to take it outside of the pages of the book. I feel like that's one of the most important things we can do. Uh, in the publishing space these days is have a book, but also have things that take it beyond the book. Because when people actually get it out of their head and, and actually put things into action, that's when real change uh, starts to happen. So I love that. I remember when we first talked about the book at Chosen, we we're like, it'd be so great if Chris had just some kind of a little SQ assessment and you've way gone or you've gone way beyond that at this point. So not not surprising right. though that you would blow it out of the water. So great job there. Well, um, I have Chris- to honestly give credit where credit's due because <laughs> my team actually my team actually came to me and said, man, we need to create this. You know, they, they all read the manuscript and they're like, this is amazing. Can we create some kind of tool that would open the doors of people's hearts and minds to this and also help them to see that God is actually already giving them spiritual intelligence, but they just haven't created neural pathways to it yet, so to speak. Right. Yeah. To, to act once. Once you put that lens on, you can see where God's already been talking to you and leading oh, you. And Chris, in terms of people connecting with you, finding out more about the book, uh, where can we find you on the web? Um, you can find me at Chris. Uh, uh, you can find me at Chris K R I S V. I'm sorry, Chris V at uh, Chris V dot com or Chris Valentin dot com. And you can also find me on social media. I'm on Facebook and on Twitter, and on Instagram. Again, KV Ministries, kvministries.com. That's what I was trying to say, kvministries.com. Yeah, I'm so smart, I can't even, yeah, I, I can't even remember my own address. kvministries.com is what I meant to say. So you can find us on kvministries.com on the on the web. You can also find us on social media, KV Ministries. Follow us. I'd love, I love to interact with you some. That'd be great. 
And like we do with every episode, we'll have detailed links in the show notes, all the places you can connect with Chris, find out more about the book, everything you'll need. We'll have it all linked up for you over at SeanTabbitt.com. What the book looks like, except for it says spiritual intelligence. <laughs> it's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Chris Vallotton. Once again, our book today was Spiritual Intelligence, The Art of Thinking Like God. Uh, this book actually released back on October 20th, so just a couple days ago. It's already widely available wherever great books are sold. Uh, if you want to, right after you're done with this interview, if you want to start listening or, excuse me, reading a chapter right out of the gate here, head over to the sqbook.com. You can grab a free chapter download there. Uh, if you want to find out a little more about the upcoming Spiritual Intelligence Masterclass, head over to sqinstitute.com. Or uh, if you want to find out about Chris's ministry, head over to kbministries.com. And Chris, I just want to say thank you for sharing with us today. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. God bless you, Sean.